Ooh, that was nasty. Today, we are trying something new on this channel. I'm a composer. If you're not part of this channel, my name's Zach Heidi. I'm gonna react to the Halo Infinite soundtrack, which I've not yet heard a single note from. However, I'm a huge fan of the Halo music by Martin O'Donnell. I'm also a huge fan of Gareth Coker, who I know was one of the co-composers on the soundtrack. And I wanna kind of give you my honest first impression and take as I listen through the soundtrack. I know it's huge uh, on my screen. It says two and a half hours, but if I hear anything cool, obviously I'll react and maybe try and explain a little bit of what's happening on a theory level, or maybe even uh, go in my logic project and show you the instrumentation as we go. If you enjoy this video, uh, it's definitely getting demonetized. So if you want to support me, you can join me on Patreon. Link is in the description. Or if you want to just buy me a coffee, the link is also in the description there. All right, I'm very excited. Literally have not heard a single note of this. So, here we go. Great. That's such a classic Halo thing there, is using that... Actually, I think the whole chord progression kind of reminds me of um, one of the tracks in Halo 3 when they start to break out. I, I can't remember what it's called, but it has this like C minor, A flat, major, F major, which has this kind of like surprising lift to it. And so it feels both dark and hopeful at the same time. I love it. <laughs> Syncopation's cool. Cool, yeah. This is nice. It's also using a pedal point, which is a common musical technique where you basically just hang on one note, specifically like a bass note. So you just do, and then you play the chords over it, so. And that gives it the sense of like, uh, like it's just destined to land where it's supposed to go. It's just, it's just stuck kind of where it is, which is super cool. Let's go on, let's hear another track. This is cool. All right, so, so right there, what's happening is like a triplet pattern over a four pattern. So you're getting essentially three over four. So you're getting bum ba dum 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 which is kind of like a four pattern. But then on top of that, you're getting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's one, two, three. So you basically get this kind of syncopation that happens between the strings and the drums, which is super cool. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's gorgeous. What was that? Something like that. So it's like, he's reharmonizing the whole melody. So instead of, which is what we're used to, we're getting G major, it's like F sharp minor. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, man, that's just beautiful. That's my favorite one so far, Zeta Halo. Same initials as my name, funny enough. Okay, let's keep moving. Heck yeah, this is picking up. Whoa, that was a cool. The strings in the background were doing like D on the top. It's like setting up for. 
That's super cool. Man, I really like where the soundtrack is going. Like, the first few cues were, for me, they were, like, okay. They kind of didn't offer as much new to the soundtrack. But these cues now, as we're starting to, like, get into it, I'm, I'm really liking what they're adding in here. Oh, that was nasty. The Banished. That's sick. <laughs> nice. Referencing the original Martin O'Donnell track. So I'm noticing that I think one of the motives is that um, I heard it when I first heard The Banished. It was doing like... And I'm now hearing this in here. I'm wondering if actually uh, they were allowed to use any of Martin O'Donnell's music for Halo because this sounds like almost they like tempt it and then they were trying to do a variant of it. I don't know if that was an artistic choice or if they just literally couldn't use the music, but either way, it's cool. There it is again. da da dum That's beautiful. And there's just something so cool about French horn. Just the way French horn kind of sits above like a string texture. I'm gonna pull up my French horn. That's just, especially in that register, it's just so freaking beautiful. Especially solo French horn too. It just, it just gets that just gorgeous quality to it. That, And you hear like when the horn is loud too, it's kind of more brassy, but when you keep a horn really quiet and you just kind of like mic it way up. You get kind of like that Skyrim thing, if you all know this. Just absolutely beautiful. I love it so much. There we go. I, I guess that answers my question about the copyright. I always love that part, not to pause it, but that part is so cool. It's like this syncopated. It's just so, so cool. I love that pattern. Oh man, that was so gorgeous. It's just like, it reminds me of um, some of Thomas Newman's writing where you get these just really isolated strings. They're, they're very barren, icy, cold, dancing around each other, really. Just. It has a bit of a Gregorian chant feel, which obviously the whole Halo soundtrack does that, but especially the strings, just the way they're utilized in this kind of like 
just two voices moving with each other. It's just this, it just feels like this slow motion dance. It's just hard not to get sucked into the music. Yeah. My impression so far is they're staying really true to Martin O'Donnell's sound. You know, they're kind of basing their palette off of what he's done in previous games. This really, really reminds me of the Halo 3 soundtrack. Like, a lot of themes come through, and I'm not a huge, you know, I don't know Halo all the way through, but I know most of those themes happen at least in Halo 3, if not earlier in the game. So it sounds like they're doing a really good job staying true to that. That was a cool sound. So to me, that instrument sounds like a Balinese gamelan, which is from Bali. And the sound that it gives is that kind of like meditative, but also a little bit eerie kind of sound that and it warbles. Uh, they use that a lot in minimalist music. It was the basis and inspiration for a lot of minimalist composers like Philip Glass, Steve Reich, they all kind of uh, drew from this. Arvo Parrot has a piece that uses a sound that's very similar. Whoa! This is sick. So Endless is definitely one of my favorite tracks. I'm keeping a list of my favorite tracks here. <laughs> I love when composers do this. So there's an ostinato going on here, which is basically saying a repeating pattern. Something like that. So that's like G minor, right? But I love, they go to A flat major which technically should have an A flat, so it should be like, but they don't. They just keep it right where it is, so they go. It's like absolutely wrong, and it sounds so freaking cool at the same time because of it. I love it. There it is again. There's our theme. You know what's funny? I'm pretty sure in Sh in Sherlock, the show Sherlock, that that's Moriarty's theme. What if I was to shoot you now, right now? Then you could cherish the look of surprise on my face. Because I'd be surprised, Sherlock, really, I would. I'm just a teensy bit disappointed. Oh, cool. This is in seven. Four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. That's cool. So, like for composers out there, just adding a slight rhythmic variance of something, just breaking up a rhythm, making it a little bit abnormal, can add so much interest to your music. This is like that other cue. I love it. And the contrast, listen to the contrast of the kick drum against the like the wet sound of the choir. It's 
so cool. So we're three quarters through the soundtrack now, so I'm expecting that there's gonna be one track in here that's just gonna like blow my mind near the end. Well, that was ominous. Oh! Oh, sick. Oh, it's referencing Halo 3? Cool. You also have to be careful of referencing original music too much. Like, if you are doing a sequel to something and you keep referencing the old movie, like, or the old game or whatever, it's really cool, but in small doses. If you give them too... It's like eating too much candy, you know? If you give them too much of what they want, then they just get sick of it. So you have to give it in little bite-sized pieces. <laughs> Sick. Dude, that makes my heart drop. <laughs> What is that? That's gross. Sounds like a bass, like. I love that, man. Very cool. Cool, cool, cool. There it is, our old friend. Ba -da -da -da. So that's the lowest note on um, the contrabass, like the low bass in the string orchestra. So that one and the cello also, this note. So that's really gonna ring out when they play that. If you hear they go, listen to how that note just kind of sings out. Super cool. Ah, they combine the two themes. I heard that one. So they're messing with a bunch of themes at the same time. Whenever you get composers messing with all the themes at the same time, you got a feeling that you're near the end of the story. the goose pimples Dang, dang, what a soundtrack. My first impression, really, really immersive. You know, for a game about war, the soundtrack is very calm, tranquil, peaceful, and evokes serenity in a way that I feel like a lot of other game soundtracks don't. And I think that's what's always been the appeal for me and other people about the Halo soundtracks is they're so freaking beautiful. I mean, getting Gareth Coker, 
uh, as one of the composers who did Ori, you know, such a gorgeous game to do Halo, I think was a perfect fit. Overall, I'm really impressed. I think it's really good, really immersive. Huge props to the composers. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, it's definitely getting demonetized. So if you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee in the description. And if you want to give me suggestions for other things to listen to, let me know. Also leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next one.